Rowdy Nation TV, welcome back to the channel. Do me a favor, before we even get started, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video. Um, I'd just like to say thanks to all the um, subscribers who subscribe to my channel. We finally reached the 100 mark, and I'd just like to say thanks for listening to me. We're going to get into the story of Monster Cody, a.k.a. S Sanika Shakur. Now, he was born Cody Dejan Scott. We're going to get into the bio of uh, Mo Monster Cody. I don't know if you guys know about Monster Cody, but if, if you guys follow the gang culture, he's from California. You know, he died. He's been dead now for about a week. Now, this is not no breaking news that we're covering, but, I, you know, I've been uh, listening to Monster, Co uh, Monster Cody on, on, on YouTube. Very charismatic dude. I'm sorry to hear that he passed away, and circumstances of his passing is still unknown. So we're going to get into his bio. We're going to get into the bio just for you people who don't know who Monster Cody is. We're going to get into the bio and, you know, hopefully we can shed some light on this brother and the tragic life that he led. Now, <clears throat> Sanika Shakur, born Cody Dejan Scott, November 13th, 1963, June 6, 2021, also known for his former street moniker, Monster or Monster Cody. Now, Monster Cody was a member of the Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Eight Trey Gangster Crips. Now, he got his nickname when he was 13 years old. Now, he was a member when he was a 13-year-old gang member when he beat and stomped a robbery victim until he was disfigured. Now, Monster claimed to have um, reformed in prison. You know, and he uh, started fo uh, started uh, following the Republic of New Africa, and he wrote a book. Now, this is the book that I was, uh, you know, I bought, I had this book. You know, it's the it's called Monster, the Autobiography of an L.A. Gang Member, and that's a good read. You guys should, you know, this brother. I'm not gonna lie, we all have talents, you know, hidden talents that we don't even know about. And I think sometimes when you live a certain type of lifestyle. Sometimes that those talents emerge, and sometimes they don't. You know, some people never get to, uh, you know, you know, find out what their true calling is. But I think this brother, you know, he was on the right track. But Monster describes how, you know, he was drawn into the gang, his experiences as a gangster, both on the street and in the prisons, and eventually his transformation into a black nationalist. Now, Monster spent 36 months at San Quentin Prison and five years at Pelican Bay State Prison most of which was spent in solitary confinement where he converted to Islam. So, you know, this brother, he, he done a little bit of time and, and like they say, most of his time was always in solitary confinement because most of these young brothers who grew up in this area, era and that time, very aggressive, very aggressive young brothers at this time. You know, this was the height of the California, L.A. Uh, war, you know, in, in California amongst the rolling 60s and the H.A. And the HA gangsters. So, in March of 2007, Shakur, already sought by the police for parole violations, uh, was named on the city's most wanted gang members list. Now, he was arrested by the Los Angeles Police Department for allegedly breaking into a home of an acquaintance and beating him in order to steal his car. Now, the charges represent a possible third strike that could send Monster back to prison for life. Now, in, in May of 2008, Shakur pleaded no contest to carjacking ro and robbery charges, and was sentenced to six years in state prison. Also in 2008, Monster, you know, he wrote a book about a, a fiction book called Thug Life. Now, it didn't get the rave reviews. It was it didn't get, you know, it wasn't as popular as his autobiography. Now, he was released from Pel Pelican Bay after serving two-thirds of a six-year sentence in August of 2012. So, Monster been in and out of jail for a long time. You know what I'm saying? This brother, you know, he seemed like he had demons that he was struggling with. You know what I'm saying? You know, Monster was born Cody Dijon Scott in, in Los Angeles, California on November 13, 1963, as we said. You know, to Ernest Scott and Bertie Canada, both from Houston, Texas. So his people come from the South. Just like most of everybody, you know, that migrated out from, from these southern towns. My family, you know, I migrated out from the South. To where I am at to today, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, his people are from Texas. Cody was the fifth of six children, including four brothers and two sisters. So he got a brother named Kevin, a sister named Kim. He got a brother named Kerwin, a brother named Krishan. And then there's Cody himself. And then there's Kendis. So 
Shakur believed it was probable that he was the son of former Los Angeles Rams running back Dick Bass. I'm not sure. Do you guys know who Dick Bass is? Are you sports fans? Anybody out there sports fans? I don't I don't know if Dick Bass was in my era. You know, he was probably a little bit before me. I, I've never really heard of him. And that he was uh, conceived during an adulterous affair that his mother was having with the, with the football star. A claim for which there is no compelling evidence. Now, Ernest Scott held a bitter resentment toward uh, Birdie's affair and physically abused his wife regularly throughout Monster's early childhood. So they're talking about his mother, you know, how his mother was being abused by his stepfather. They didn't believe that this was his dad, you know what I'm saying? So um, in 1972, Birdie Scott moved her family into a house on West 69th Street, in Dinker Avenue in a rough and gang-infested neighborhood on the west side of South, South, Los, uh, South Central Los Angeles. According to Shakur, his first encounter with street gangs occurred at the age 10 when he was assaulted by two 13-year-olds who stole his money. Because Bertie Scott worked several jobs to support her large family as well as the, neglected, the neglect that he received from Ernest Scott Young Monster would often hang out on the streets of his new neighborhood. It was around this time that he began hanging around his neighbor, Stanley Tookie Williams, the leader of the West Side Crips Street Gang. Now, I know you guys, I don't know if you know who uh, Stanley Tookie Williams is. I don't know, remember Jamie Foxx played Stanley Tookie Williams in that, in that movie. I can't remember the name of the movie. Was it Blue Rage? Uh, Black Redemption. I think that was or Black Redemption or something like that. But um, let's, let's get back into it. In his memoir, Blue Rage, Black Redemption, Tookie Williams recalled the occasion in which he and other adult members of the Crips would smoke PCP and lift weights and, um, at, at Williams' house. According, according, according to Williams, Monster was always present at the house and would watch in awe as the gang members would lift weights and tell stories about the gang fights and shootings they had committed. In the book, Williams also expressed his regret regarding his behavior around the impressionable young Shakur. He even held himself personally responsible for exposing Shakur to drugs, as Shakur himself would later become a frequent, you know, we're talking about Monster, who Shakur become a frequent PCP user. Wow, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he started off very young using some really serious hard drugs, you know, PCP. In 1975, a member of the West Side Crips nicknamed Sidewinder formed a set called the Eight Trey Gangster Crips, also known as the 83rd GC slash maybe uh, ETG or ETGC. In uh, Shakur's neighborhood on the evening of June 15, 1975, the day of his sixth grade graduation. Now they banging. Now this is back. You, listen to this. He's only in the sixth grade, right? So, Cody was initiated into ETG. Shakur was courted into the gang, also known, you know, you had to be jumped in, in which the gang members beat, beat up the new recruits to see if he or she was going to fight back or defend themselves. Now, now, Monster and other gang members then hotwired a stolen car after, uh, you know, after, the, you know, they got jumped in, you know, they hotwired a stolen car in which he and several members of the a Trey Gangster Crips, all armed with revolvers and shotguns, tracked down members of the Brims Street Gang, a set of the Bloods, which he had been which had been hanging out in the Crips neighborhood. Now the A Trey Gangsters opened fire on a group of approximately, you know, about 15 Brims, shooting several of them. You know, shoot monster armed with a 12, you know, 12 gauge shotgun instructed not to come back until all eight rounds of the weapon was gone so there was somebody behind him controlling this young man at the age of in in in, in, in the sixth grade you know which is a, which is a horrible thing to do you know what i'm saying to manipulate some young man's mind and in the sixth grade he's carrying a sawed off shotgun can you imagine that i got kids you know what i'm saying can i imagine i, I can't even Man, this is crazy. So this is the life that this young brother was living, and this is how it got. And he's smoking PCP. Now, remember, he's, he's, he's already smoking PCP. He's carrying around a 12-gauge shotgun. Nothing good can be coming, right? Let's get back into it. And instructed not to return to the car unless he used all eight rounds of the weapon. He shot several Brim gang members that evening. Now, that's crazy, right? Sixth grade. Now, 
As a new member of the Crips, Monster was mentored in the ways of gangbanging by Trey Ball. In 1977, at the age of 13, Monster and Trey Ball attempted to rob an older African-American man who was walking through their neighborhood. The man punched Shakur, uh, the man punched Monster in the face, and after being physically restrained by Trey Ball when he attempted to run, was kicked and stumped by, uh, by, by Monster for approximately 20 minutes. Cody's vicious attack left the man in a coma with his face permanently disfigured. It's at the age of 13, left the man in a coma, face is disfigured. This is an older, older black man that they, they, they robbed and they did this too. You know, so the so the black on black violence is just, you know, this is something he's a very aggressive young man and he's, you know, in our community and in the black on black violence is something that he's been doing at a very young age. So according to Monster, Crips rep pre Crips present at the same um, Crips present at the crime scene overheard police officers saying that whoever assaulted this uh, whoever assaulted this man was a monster and reported this back to him and from that point on the members of the a Trey Gangsters called uh, Shakur Monster, and he took the name as a street moniker. Wow. Now, let's get into his first shooting. This is the first time that Monster Cody first shot somebody. It was at the age of 14. You know, it was 1978. Um, um, he shot at, the, at an employee at a fast food restaurant who had assaulted his younger brother, Kershawn and later assaulted and pulled a gun on, on Monster. Kershawn uh, Scott later joined the A-Trays and assumed the, the nickname Little Monster. So he took on the, the you know, he took on his uh, brother's name, you know, so he became, his, his little brother became Little Monster. So a week after being released from jail, Monster was arrested again after being falsely accused of shooting a member of the Inglewood Family Bloods while he and other members of the Crips were on their way to a roller skating rink in Compton, California on February 14, 1979. Monster was arrested for an assault in Grand Theft Auto and served nine months at Camp Munez in Lake Hughes, California. Now we're going to get into the rivalry between the A-Trade Gangster uh, Crips and the Rolling Sixties. Now... This is the beginning of the Crip on Crip violence. We're gonna get into we're gonna get into this because before all this stuff happened, these two groups of people I heard used to hang out. You know, even though they were from different cliques, I don't even know they I don't even think they were sets then. I think they I don't even I think because I heard Monster say on one video that the '60s was only called '60s. They were they didn't even have the rolling on that yet. They was you know you had the rolling abs and then you had the '60s and they both were in the same neighborhood. And I can't remember something happened and then the rolling abs became the rolling '60s. So let's get into this. During Shakur's stay at Camp Moons, several major events court occurred on the streets of South Los Angeles that involved the Crips. On March 15, 1979, the West Side Crips leader Stanley Tilkey Williams was arrested for four murders uh, committed during two separate robberies while on an alleged drug binge. Now, to his death, uh, Tilkey, Tilkey Williams denied killing those four people all the way up until his execution. He denied that, bro. So, and it seemed like if you're on your deathbed, wouldn't you want to tell the truth? So, I don't really know. Somebody just asked me the other day, man, do you think do, uh, 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 Tookie did that? And I was like, man, I really don't know. You know, I really don't know. If you're taking, I'm not sure what kind of drugs he was on, but, you know, if it was PCP, but I, or I don't believe it was crack, because I, I never heard of them, anybody saying that Tookie used crack. Now, PCP, I've heard of that. Now, Williams was sentenced to death row and executed by lethal injection on December 13, 2005. On August 9, 1979, Raymond Washington, the founder of the Crips, was murdered in a drive-by shooting near his home. You know, you know, Raymond Washington was, is, you know, that's why if you ever heard of the Raymonds, the Crips, the Raymond Crips, that's, they're named after Raymond Washington. So, now, he was murdered in a drive-by shooting near his home because Raymond Washington always made it a point never to walk up to cars. It was determined that his killers were people he knew personally since he had walked up to the murderer's car and had a conversation with, the, with, with them prior to being shot. Washington's murder was blamed on the Hoover Crips, you know, now known as the Hoover Criminals or the Hoover Gang, which started a war between the East Side Crips and the Hoovers. Now... We'll get into the part. Now, I just wanted to bring that to you people, man. That's just a little bit of Monster's story. It goes way deep. I really don't have time to get into 
you know, the whole thing. Because there's a whole lot. His brother went to, um, you know, he ended up going in and out of jail. Like they said in 2000, I think like they said, 2007 or whatever, when he was wanted for, uh, um, you know, for doing that to um, his neighbor or whoever when he broke into their house and tried to steal their car. You know, I'm not sure if that was his last stint in jail or not, but... You know, like they said, I think he did. I think he may have did three years on that on that little charge right there. But there's a quick little story. I did do a video of um, Lil uh, uh, Lil Fee. I did a video about Lil Fee. It was, actually, it was about the people that Lil Fee killed. It was um, this NFL football star. He killed their family. He killed like four four people in their family. I don't know if you guys seen that video, but him now he's a rolling sixty. Lil Fee is a rolling 60, and Monster is an a trade gangster. And right after he, uh, Monster tells the story of him getting into a shootout with Lil Fee after he had did that crime. He hadn't got arrested yet. So according to Monster, after Lil Fee was on the run, they ran into each other, had a shootout, and I think they both ended up getting arrested. I'm not sure if they got arrested at the same time, but Monster says they both end up getting arrested, and then he ends up seeing Lil Fee in jail. They come across each other later on in jail, and he tells an a interest, a interesting story how they go back and back and forth, you know, uh, you know, in jail, you know, you know, about this crip monologue. They going back, you know. What's that rolling 60 like, cuz? And he come back with, what's that A-Trade gangster crip like, cuz? And then you talking about two brothers who are in jail. They're going back and forth, hollering, hollering. You know how they do, these gang members do. And they go back and forth. And this brother, you got to think, this brother is facing four murders. He's killed uh, a mother, a wife, a mother, a daughter, and two nephews. And this was the professional football player's uh, family. And he's in here. They, these, they, I think he was 19 when this happened. If I, if you see my video, check it out uh, about that uh, football player's family getting murdered. But I, I just wanted to, you know, like I said, go online, uh, look up some of um, Monster Cody's videos on YouTube. Very charismatic dude, man. Very smart. I'm talking about very, I'm very intellectual. You know, like I said, I think he wrote like three books. And I just like to say, you know, my condolences go out to his family, you know, his friends, and anybody who loved him. You know what I'm saying? I got, I went out and I supported him, and I brought the book, and I, and I hope the book, I hope his redemption, you know, that he got the redemption that he wanted. But you know, they said that I don't know if you people know, but this is how they don't even know how he died, right? So let me get into that before we even sign off. They don't even know how he died. They found him in Ocean's, Ocean's, Ocean City, Oceanside, California, California. And I believe he was living in a tent, people. He was living in a tent in Oceanside, California. He was 57 years old, right? 57 years old. They, the, they haven't really released the cause of death yet. But, man, that hurt my heart when I seen that he was living basically homeless in a tent. And, you know, and I just was watching videos of this brother on, on, um, on YouTube, man. And, and he looked at healthy. He looked at good. So I, I, it's, just, it's just really strange how life can turn and, you know, like some people say, people came out and they gave him all this love. You know, uh, I think it was on Florence and Normandy. They had a, a vigil for him. But, you know, I think they should have gave that man his flowers while he was alive. But yet and still, karma ain't no joke because, you know, they say you live by the gun, you die by the gun, right? This man did commit a lot of violence against people. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there who don't hold him in any regard, in any reverence. So... At the same time, we got to look at that picture, too. You know, he's hurt a lot of people. You know, he hurt a lot of people doing this uh, violence that he uh, committed in his neighborhood against his own people, black-on-black -black crime. You know, we don't go for that, and I think we need to do better than that. So, Rowdy Nation TV, I hope I could, um, you know, show, shed a little light on Monster Cody and his story. Oh, yeah, thanks again, people. I just want to say thanks uh, for the 100 subscribers. Man, I'm... I, I tell y'all what, once I get to, I want to try to, you know, get like 500 subscribers and then I can probably like maybe give it like a t-shirt and a hat away with Rowdy Nation TV on it. I'm just thinking, you know, I, I got another job I be working, so this is like my little hobby. But I really love talking to you guys. I really love sharing stories with you. So I just want to keep this going. Anybody listening to this, give me a shout out. Click that like button. Share this video. Rowdy Nation TV. Have a good day. Rowdy Nation TV, we out.